Welcome back to the channel and today we will be taking a look how the i5 6600K fares in today's world such as in gaming and video editing. As last time the i5 4460 was the, the most budget CPU you can get for gaming but as of this time it has been sort of overwhelmed as games start to use more cores and more threads as games also demand for higher CPU cores and higher clock speeds. So how would this system fare in 2020 when the CPU came out about 4 years ago? So with that, let's jump right into today's video. Let's go. i5-6600K in is a Z170 Ashrock motherboard along with 16GB of Patriot RAM, 8x8 in dual channel configuration, a GTX 1060 along with well 650W power supply and a Cooler Master AIO. So it is sufficient enough to cool down the CPU, though I'm not really going to be overclocking it as it's quite an old board and I don't really want to push it away until it kills the board. So in this case, we're going to be doing all the benchmarks without overclocking and just enabling the iGPU or so as to allow Premiere Pro to take advantage of the iGPU if it does want to do that. So what are the specifications of the i5-6600K? Well, it's part of the Skylake architecture that has 4 cores and 4 threads on a 14 nanometer process with a base frequency of 3.5 GHz and a max one of 3.9 though this can be boosted further with the fact that this CPU is an unlocked processor This also uses a maximum of 91 watts using DDR4 RAM or DDR3 L RAM with a speed of either 1866 or 2133 It's also paired with Intel HD Graphics 530 using the LGA1151 socket Okay, a bit of history of this chip, it was first released on the 1st of September 2015. With not really any other rivals as AMD at that time, the CPUs were either very expensive and need really good motherboards to run as they were extremely power hungry and inefficient. It's also overclockable that allows users to squeeze out more performance than the max 3.9GHz clock speed with a decent air cooler and motherboard. The benchmarks we'll be using in this video will be Cinebench R20, 3D Mark, and Premiere Pro with the latest version. I will link to the version number over here. And then also, we're just gonna do like for Premiere Pro, we're gonna see with my test project file on an external SSD, we're gonna see how many drop frames it gets when you're playing a certain timeline that I already have. And we're also gonna see how long it takes for the system to render a video. With that, let's jump right in. Well, in Cinebench R20, it scores a score of 1454 points, that's not too bad for its age. In 3 Mark, for the CPU score, it gets 4152, and for the GPU side, it gets 3630, and though this is paired with my GTX 1060. In real world workloads, running Premiere Pro 2020 CC on a test project file that I've been using for a few systems now. With NVIDIA's CUDA acceleration turned on, it gets 319 drop frames which I would say is quite respectable considering that Premiere Pro already has optimized itself to use the GPU video decode engine to actually help with rendering. I'll actually do a video on this quite soon, so stay tuned. And on the test project render, it completes it in 4 minutes 50 seconds. And all of this were done on the 4K timeline with max preview settings and multi-video tracks with 3D graphics or so. So it's quite decent for a CPU that is this old and well given quite decent performance. Now we're just talking about games. In games such as CSGO, the CPU and GPU is quite evenly matched for both of them, getting around 90% utilization for both. In the game it gets about between 150 frames to about 300 plus frames in CSGO 1080p, all settings max with motion blur turned off. Now, I'm gonna talk about buying this chip in 2020 because of course you're not gonna be paying the retail price back like in 2015. In 2020, you can buy this CPU plus motherboard and RAM with those type of combos ranging about 200 to about 250 HDD. Which makes this quite a good CPU for budget build. They can do some video editing paired with a 1060 as that's the most ideal card you're gonna pair it with. If not, you're gonna run into bottlenecking. And though I'm, I first gonna replace the i5-4460 as that CPU is well used to be the most budget king and I feel that this CPU here will much better outperform it, giving you new features such as M.2, 
faster DDR4 RAM compared to the previous budget CPU, which also allows you to get, you know, RGB. And compared to the i5-4460 that uses DDR3 RAM with no M.2 support, such as the ability to use Samsung M.2 SSDs, which are a bit more reliable, then take up a little bit less space. In conclusion, I'll say that the i5-6600K is definitely quite a decent CPU if you're looking to build like a budget editing rig, or maybe more like a budget gaming rig, with the potential to overclock similar to the AMD CPUs out there. This, will, this entire system here wouldn't really cost you more than like what, $400, you can buy most of them used, but do take note that there'll be no warranty for these parts as all these parts are mostly older. Especially for the CPU and motherboard as I don't think you can find a brand new one anymore. You can buy brand new parts for like the RAM and all those as it's still using DDR4 RAM. So with that, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you guys liked it, leave a like, subscribe, share, comment down below. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.